Hello, we start our tour here in the tunnel at the source of the radiation, which is the undulator you see in the far distance in this white box. Um, the photons and electrons then travel together uh, until this point where you see these magnets and these magnets divert the electrons to the right hand side into a tube, which is a copper tube here. So this tube then only contains the electrons and the photons, the X-rays, are here in the silvery tube. The very first object of uh, photon diagnostics then is on this girder. This is an imager where the X-ray beam can be observed, the transverse profile, by inserting a scintillator on a manipulator, which is driven by a motor here on this blue structure. Then the scintillator is inserted and the beam is imaged by a camera system which is inside this black box. Another object here is a filter chamber where again we can drive in from the top with a motor, we can drive in different filter foils, for instance metals, in order to do some simple spectroscopy. And also we have another uh, filter, which is a graphite filter that can block optical radiation. Now we are at the Spontaneous Radiation Aperture, SRA. These are slits in X and Y direction. And just after them, we have a monochromator, which is called K-mono, K-monochromator, and is used for undulator commissioning and optimization. Inside this chamber, which can be moved in and out transversely to the beam, there are two channel cut crystals on goniometers, so they can be rotated in order to filter the frequencies, the spectrum of the radiation. Directly after this is a special imager, which is the spontaneous radiation imager, which is used for uh, looking at weak spontaneous radiation from one or two single segments of the undulator. The scintillator is driven in from the side, and then a camera looks from the top to the optical photons that are um, seen from the X-ray beam. Now, going downstream, we come to the very first online gas-based diagnostics, which is the workhorse for our diagnostics, and it's called the X-ray Gas Monitor, XGM. There are four chambers up here, vacuum chambers. Two of them are for X-direction, two of them for Y-direction, so they are rotated by 90 degrees. Each of these chambers delivers information about the pulse energy, and um, we get also the beam position in X and Y. Then below we see here some local electronics, and to the left down here, this is the gas distribution panel. The gas distribution panel allows to select by remote control the gas, the target gas, which we are using, and we have four options. We can put Xenon, which we usually, usually use for hard X-rays. We can use Krypton, for instance, Neon and Nitrogen. So we are in SASE-1. This is the solid attenuator. It's made by many plates. Uh, by two materials, diamond or silicon. And you can see here, every white cylinder corresponds to one plate that can be inserted inside the meme or not. You can insert more plates, less plates, and in this way, you can decide how much of the beam you want to, to absorb. And in this way, you can have a different power of the beam because for some experiments, it's not only important to have a powerful beam, but also to have a, a controllable beam that you can decide how much intensity you want. And here with this combination, putting more or less plates, you can really uh, 
shape the beam intensity the way that you like. Here we have uh, the beryllium lenses. These are compound lenses. They work a bit in the same way. They can be inserted or not in the beam. And if you put all of them out, then the beam is going uh, unfocused to the end of the tunnel. But if you start to put some lenses, then it gets focused and you can put more lenses, less lenses. You can choose which lens, they have different thicknesses and different proper properties. And in this way, you can choose among many different uh, focusing situations to prepare the beam for the experiment that you want to do. Now we are right after the mirrors. You see the mirror tank of mirror 2 and directly after the MCP-based detector. The MCP-based detector has two manipulators where from the side transversely we can drive in several MCPs, multi-channel plates, and we can thus um, use this for optimizing the SASE by recording the pulse energies even at megahertz rate. These MCPs are directly driven into the beam and um, actually they, they survive the beam. After these, we have here a regular imager, which is a more simple version, which we have after every um, X-ray optics. This is called the pop-in monitor. And what is more simple is that we drive in from the side a scintillator, which is under 45 degrees. There is no mirror and the camera and optics looks at the scintillator at normal incidence. So this is uh, one of our shutters. Uh, it, it is used uh, when you want to stop the beam. No? And then uh, if you can imagine it, because the beam is so intense, uh, it's not that easy. So here we have uh, three sections, basically. The first section is an absorber. It has inside diamonds and uh, B4C, boron carbide. And uh, then uh, if you would uh, drill uh, this uh, part, uh, you would have here a Burtro monitor that is actually a device that tells you that you are, were drilling and then can uh, shut down uh, the facility or let's say at least this beam uh, because of that. And for the hard X-rays that they just go through everything without uh, drilling any material, then you have here another piece of a tungsten that is designed to stop that. So all together they work and they can stop our beam. Hello everyone. Uh, now I'm going to show you about the Hyrex spectrometer, which we call it as a short hard X-ray single shot spectrometer, which is acronym of Hyrex. So the Hyrex has a two components. One is a grating unit and the second one is a crystal unit. So first I'll start with a grating unit. In the grating unit, we have the gratings, which has a beam splitter and split the first order beam and split take the beam to the two parts like a first order and a second order. So the zeroth order goes to the instruments and the first order beam will be taken by the spectrometer crystals. Then we have the absorber here which has a B4C and which is the purpose of this absorber is to block the higher order diffraction from the gratings to protect the vacuum chamber and to see the beam profile always we have a yaks and there are two cameras and we always see the first beam with a yak and then move the absorber as well as the gratings in the beam. So this is around 1 meter distance and this grating unit is around 360 meters from the source. So now I will try to show you about the crystal spectrometer. Now I am going to explain about the crystal chamber which is covered with the fence which is to protect the beryllium window. So now we take it out the fence and I will explain you about the crystal chamber. So this is called as a crystal unit together the detectors unit. So there are two detectors and the crystal sitting on this chamber. And this whole chamber is sitting on the XY stage and which can go linearly X and Y direction. It follows according to the beam condition. Then we have the crystal sitting on the holder in this manipulator. We have four set of crystals, silicon crystal and the diamond crystal with different bending radius. So, the, they are fixed bending radius of 100 millimeters for the diamond, 
which we are using is a uh, diamond 110 and the silicon we are using the 111 and 110 of the fixed bending radius of 100 millimeters and 75 millimeters. So then we have a rotation stage which will uh, select according to the Bragg angle and uh, following the photon energy. So the crystals will move according to the photon energy and then I set the Bragg angle to see the spectrum. So now I will show you about the beryllium window which is the window which is the interface between the vacuum chamber and the beam exiting from the chamber from the crystal. So right now the beryllium window is covered with the uh, protective cap because of the shutdown we just protect the beryllium window and as well as people working here. And now I would like to just show about the two detectors here. Uh, we have a two detectors here, one is a optical camera which we called as a photonic science and then we have the Gotthard detector. So uh, the optical science camera which is runs with 10 hertz which has a yak and the optics and the one towards your right side is a Gotthard which is a 1 mega which, which runs with 1 megahertz right now which has a strip detector which, which, is, which is direct detection of the x-rays and it is a pulse resolve detector. So based on the requirement, we always translate between the, these two detectors on the linear stage. Yeah. That's it. Okay, here we have one example of our mirrors. In this particular case, this mirror is used to direct the beam to one experiment or to the other one. You can choose moving the mirror. The mirror is in vacuum, but you can see the motors in this design are outside vacuum and they are here connected with the mirror inside to move them in the five degrees of freedom. So you can really move this mirror in all the way that you like and the beam goes from this direction, is reflected a, with a small angle that you can put, you can direct to the experiment that you like. Here we are at the downstream gas section, the second XGM in the beamline, X-ray gas monitor. We see first the start of the gas section with the differential pumping, which separates the X-ray gas monitor gas pressure from the beamline pressure. These are several chambers where the pressure is successively changed to the pressure of the target background gas, which is used inside the XGM. As we see on the other side of the XGM downstream, there is yet another section of differential pumping system. And beyond is the direction to the SPB SFX instrument. The XGM itself, we have seen already in the previous tunnel. But here we can see it a little bit closer because it's not on the platform. Again, we have the four chambers. Two chambers are for X position. Two chambers are rotated by 90 degrees, same chambers, but rotated 90 degrees to measure the Y direction. All the chambers deliver pulse energy information and the ele electronics again is sitting below and right next to it in the electronics rack. So we have here a monochromator. It is made by one silicon, another silicon, and then you have the beam going through these two silicons, two silicon crystals, and then they go to the experiment. It is used to have a very monochromatic beam, much more monochromatic than what we can have from the machine. And because it's so very critical, 
We have to go in cryogenic conditions on a very, very low temperature using some cryocoolers on top.